did is I created a very basic grid. I want this maze to have a grid texture to it. So what I did is I created a basic grid texture. You can get whatever perfect square texture uh, or not even a square texture. Uh, you can use anything, any texture you want. Uh, I suggest that you, I don't know, I just want you guys to get creative with this. I don't want to give you everything. Uh, so yeah, just choose a texture of your own, any square texture. It doesn't have to be that high quality. Uh, the more quality the texture has, the better it's going to look, but uh, the slower your game's going to run. Not in music, uh, in pictures, textures. And yeah, uh, you can see that I don't have many textures saved in that folder. So that is the basic... What the heck? Yeah, that's the basic texture I created. I created it in Photoshop uh, in like 30 seconds. So I am going to press U and reset and what this is going to do is it's going to unwrap each square by default it should be uh, reset anyways but it should unwrap each square on top of the each uh, yeah it should make each face here uh, right on top of our uh, texture there so when I, I'm in textured mode and I can't see it and that's because I'm in GLSL and I didn't set the material uh, so we're going to go to materials tab in the properties panel and press new we're going to name this maze, maze, yep, uh, because that's going to be the texture of every maze I use, I assume. And I'm going to increase intensity, uh, no need for specular intensity. And go to textures here, add a new one, and call this maze, maze grid, let's say. And as before, you change it to image or movie, select the texture. And you want to pack the texture. Now you can pack the texture from over here or go to image and pack image. And that's going to pack it either way and you can see the paper there, the f whatever, uh, appearing there with the file. So the texture is packed here and you can see that it unwrap uh, Blender unwrapped it by default. It looks nice. It has a border and everything, but that's not the way I want it to look. The way I want it to look is uh, having each grid being basically having this texture, each face. So it looks kind of like a grid based game um, so what I'm going to do is change the mapping here to UV and that's just going to change it to the mapping that we chose so here we have a nice grid look and as you may notice I'm actually using my theme the whole white black gray dark gray and uh, light gray thing um, okay so that's cool um, now we can test it out and see now you want to zoom in as much as possible here and have it roughly the same size as your screen so that you can see this is what what the player is going to actually see. If you have it zoomed out like this, um, that's not what the player is going to see. The player is only going to see the part that you can actually see at this point. So if you want to see the sizes the way they are, you can zoom in just enough. And here we go. Our maze is there. Uh, you can see some screen tearing issues, but that's not a problem. It might even be caused because of fraps. I'm not sure because I don't usually see it. But... That is basically our maze. That is the way I want our maze to look. Uh, obviously, as I said, you can use your own textures. Uh, I don't know, use a Minecraft texture or something. Uh, or you can create your own textures if you want this to be your actual game. So you can see that there's not much room for acceleration for our ball here. Uh, you can't accelerate uh, too much. And that's a good thing so that it wouldn't go out of the camera's frame. So that's it for our, our maze. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is add an end zone. Um, and I have no creative texture for the end zone, so I am uh, going to use my D logo as well, but you can use your whatever texture you want. That actually looks neat. It looks better than I thought it would. Um, I might change the texture of the, uh, I don't know, the bottom or the borders or whatever at some point, but that'll be later. Um, now what I want to do is... Uh, add a cylinder right there cylinder and that is added there now you want to press T just so you can see the properties don't move it once you add it it's gonna be pretty high poly and you can see that already so what you don't want to do is move it uh, what you want to do here is reduce the vertices uh, just so it gets to a reasonable poly count uh, I don't need that many vertices and it's gonna be zoomed out enough so it doesn't need to look all that smooth that is fine I'm at 15 vertices here um, and now you can move it. You can move it freely. So what I'm going to do is press tab, select, go to vertex editing and uh, vertex selection and press select the bottom vertex and delete that. And you want to delete vertices. 
uh, because we don't really need that part showing and I'm going to scale this up a bit and there we go we have our end zone platform so what I'm gonna do is select everything by double pressing A and shade smooth there we go and now you want to set the origin you wanna set geometry to origin so that just centers uh, the polygons or yeah it centers the polygon so we're gonna put this at our end zone and this would be our as I said our end zone um, you can have a more creative end zone like a portal or whatever but I'm just going simple here because I'm uh, my you know I'm limited uh, when it comes to time and it's just a tutorial so uh, keep it selected and as I said control up to expand and contract to one of those windows you wanna go to object properties and it's called cylinder I wanna call this end zone and this will come into play uh, soon pretty soon so select it everything should be selected press A just to make sure that everything is selected and press unwrap now that should unwrap it as a sphere if you delete at the bottom part it should be fine uh, and I'm gonna set this to my logo just so I can reuse textures uh, the less textures you use uh, and by the way you don't wanna pack too many textures here if you pack too many textures then uh, it will make the file very large and it's gonna it's gonna save pretty slow so you, what you might want to do if you have if you're using a lot of textures and I'm just gonna save control s to save is the hotkey you might want to go to ex uh, import no external data and make all paths relative and that's what's what that's gonna do is basically tell um, blender that this file is gonna be in this folder so if you have everything in one directory it's just gonna be uh, it's just going to be reading off of that directory, and it's not like a static uh, location. So it's it works just like packing, except it's packed in a folder or whatever, right? So uh, if you have your game saved in D-Ball, and you have that texture, the grid texture, for example, and the D-Logo texture saved in your textures uh, textures folder, uh, what the... Uh,